help young adults manage their health through the healthcare system, to help them navigate the healthcare system. I'm seeing obesity, I'm seeing asthma, I'm seeing diabetes, and I'm seeing this in every black child's chart pretty much I open. We aren't treated the same in the healthcare system and we don't trust it. The equal playing field of health access, we don't have that because we don't have physicians that understand where we're coming from. Stephanie. Um, people know me online as Stephanie J. Um, by career, I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse for 22 years, something like that. Um, and I also have a business that I help women achieve their goals and help them build a life they love. I have a degree as nurse practitioner, but I work as a nurse care manager. What I do with my job is I help young adults manage their health through the healthcare system. I help them navigate the healthcare system. Um, and I love that because like, that's a whole generation of, so I, I have kids that are teenagers to young adults, and I help them to like, navigate their lifestyle, get their health right, get their, you know, their appointments up to date, just help them to really navigate their health to move into the adult world. Um, and so that's really an opportunity for me to impact people, young adults, when they're right at that point where they're about to be independent to make better choices, to live better lives. So now that I've moved into the teen realm, um, ugh, like I'm seeing obesity, I'm seeing asthma, I'm seeing diabetes, and I'm seeing this in every black child's chart pretty much I open. And those are all, I mean, they're just, the next generation's just like pretty much dying off because they're being exposed to all these unhealthy lifestyles. And it's just, it stems down from, you know, just the, the family, the family unit. And so this is an opportunity for them now to make good decisions. One of the things we don't have, you know, equal exposure, access to healthcare, we aren't treated the same in the healthcare system and we don't trust it. Um, and so like the equal playing field of health access we don't have that because we don't have physicians that understand where we're coming from. A lot of times I'll ask kids, do you eat fruits and vegetables? Yes, okay, well, tell me about the fruits and vegetables you eat. Oh yeah, we have some canned oranges. No, like do you have an orange? No. Do you have an apple? No. It's all like, it's all canned or it's processed, but in their minds, that's fruit. Do you have green beans? Yeah, I have green beans. Well, tell me about where they come from. But those are the healthcare is not asking those questions to our kids. They're not asking the deeper questions and they're not providing resources to really na help them navigate it better. Um, and I think that's one of the limits, limitations on health, be health equity across the continuum is that we don't have that representation of individuals that are professionals treating our kids. I mean, I see it firsthand. Do you understand where this kid's even coming from? Like, do you understand his language? First of all, like what he's saying, um, what he's asking you, if he's, what he's not saying is even huger than what he's actually saying. So the first thing is like, we don't have equitable mental health resources in our communities. Um, and so like, when you talk health equity, we don't have counselors that we can trust to send our kids to. We don't have, they don't, first of all, in our culture, we teach that that's not okay. You don't talk to nobody, you don't tell nobody your business that happens in this house, you don't tell people your business. That's what we teach our kids. So they walk around with all this stuck in them. When your mental health isn't operating at a level that you can move forward, which is happening with a lot of our teens, then you stay right where you are. One thing I would love to see like how other youth can like normalize health for them. If you're not smoking, vaping's fine. So now we're just starting in the last year, I think in like 2019, we just started talking about vaping and teen health. So not knowing that they've been vaping for like, you know, three years or something like that. And we're just starting to say, okay, vaping, we talked about smoking. Well, I don't smoke, I vape. A lot of kids are vaping. So we are just starting to get tools and resources out to address 
vaping. So vaping compared to smoking, from my understanding, and I don't know a whole lot about it, but from what I know is that it can deteriorate the lungs, um, even sometimes more than smoking because of the chemicals, depending on what you're vaping, um, it can cause deterioration to the lungs, which then we have, you know, opens the door to asthma, emphysema, and all those like respiratory illnesses. This was always the most interesting story. I would have parents that say, we don't smoke in the house but I'd have this newborn baby and they would go out and they would come back and they'd be covered in smoke. And I'd be like, you can't hold this baby like that. You need to change your clothes, you need to put on a different shirt. Um, but they always said, we don't smoke in the house, we don't smoke in the car, we don't. but I'm like, you come in smelling like smoke. And I'm like, I, you know, and that's a really hard conversation to have with somebody to say, this, I know this is your baby, you can do whatever you want, but this is the best way to keep your baby safe. And so I would have a lot of conversations like that with families to encourage them to, you know, if you're gonna smoke, don't smoke around this baby. Change your clothes when you come in before you hold the baby because that smoke carries. So we had to have a lot of conversations like that because there's a lot of times people don't think about it. They don't think that, well, I smoked outside. The smoke's outside. They don't think about the smoke on their clothes that's going into their kids, that's going into the baby or the young little kids, um, even when they smoke in the car. Why keep the cigarette out the window? the smoke is getting. So we have a lot of conversations and that was always really hard because you know you can't tell people, adults, what to do, but you're trying to help them to have a healthy life for their child. Well, I think it's hard to get people to stop smoking, but the one thing that I thought about, my son actually recently quit smoking. I've been like, I tried like talking to him and you know, we were just like hit heads, both heads. Um, and the one thing that I would say that he noticed that I now will share forever, he said, I noticed my lips were black, my gums were black, my skin felt just like crappy. And he said, I just, I didn't want to look like that. And so I would just tell people like, like you said, you get one body, you get one chance, you get one opportunity um, to do everything that God's placed you on earth to do. And getting people to say like, you don't have to always do what you always did, but if you want what you've never had, you're gonna have to do what you've never done.